Um, and so it's great to be able to um, speak to Kiwanis twice in one year. Yes. I can tr Is it not on? Oh, sorry. I will speak up. And I will try to talk slower as well, because that is one of my, my challenges. Uh, <laughs> so I'm here to talk to you again about the proposed um, Community Recreation Center. When I came in January, we were in some a planning phase with our architects, and so obviously that um, planning phase is it's over. And we will be on the November ballot for a bond and a companion levy to build a new recreation center in, in Redmond. Some of this information is going to be um, things you've seen before, so I apologize. But for anyone who is unfamiliar with the Park and Recreation District and our boundaries, um, this is our boundary map as compared to the city of Redmond's um, city limits. So city of Redmond is our purity boundary green. Our service area is much larger. Um, and so we serve Terrebonne, a little bit of Crooked River Ranch, not much, Eagle Crest, um, and then South Redmond to about 61st Street. A significant um, service area. Population that we serve is approximately 45,000. Uh, it might be a little higher. Um, currently, I haven't looked at the census in a few months, and it seems like we're getting new people in Redmond every day. So we like West 35th and Hava. And the easiest land is back is across the street from our property. Highland Baptist Church is on the corner. We're one lot in, and so there's an empty lot north of us that's privately owned, and there's power lines go pretty much to the middle of that lot, so in, it's probably not really buildable. Um, we have a little bit of power lines. We have one that goes through the northwest corner of our property, but the rest of the property is pretty. has fabulous views currently. Um, you can see the mountains really well. <laughs> it's a good patient, I think, for Redmond. There's a lot of um, construction happening in South Redmond and West Redmond, and it's fairly easy access for majority of our um, our residents. Once the 35th Street Highland intersection is improved, when ODOT um, does that project someday, then it will have really, I think, easy access from um, people who live north of Highland as well. <laughs> um, great question. It is almost paid for, so um, I believe our last payment is in 2024. So we should be making our last payment um, right before that building would open if we're successful with our bond. When we purchased that built that property in 2009, when we had our failed bond attempt in November of 2008, and one of the things that we heard from the community was that we needed a location. So we did a location. Um, when we had asked in 2008, and we felt it was important for us to invest in the prop hold it on to that property for, for this purpose since then. This is a plan of the entire look like. The recreation center building is in the middle, peelish color. Um, some parking lots. We have a future rec field plan, so it would be a long field, so used for soccer, basketball, lacrosse, um, and then it says on site plan court, so one tennis court or four pickleball courts. We are not planning on putting in any more tennis courts. Um, we are planning on putting in four pickleball courts outdoors um, there. The area of pink would be an outdoor playground, and then some walking trails and a future bike course. And so all of the areas outside of that recreation building are not, the cost is not currently included in the bond. The bond amount is already $49 million, and to add those amenities would increase it, we felt, um, to a, a point where we wouldn't be successful. But our goal is that we'll have community, you know, work days to put in the soccer fields, or we'll write grants and um, leverage the success of the bond to add those outdoor amenities. So 
So this is a list of what the new facility um, amenities would look like. So we're looking at having a gym that's a high school size gymnasium that can be divided into two middle school size um, basketball courts. It'll be multi-striped for multiple activities, so not just used for basketball, be used for volleyball, indoor pickleball, um, ever indoor sports you can think of. And we'd also use it for summer camp programs for kids for um, sports camps. We are planning on putting in an elevated walking track above the, the gym. And then we also have some fitness equipment that would be upstairs as well, so cardio equipment, weight equipment. And then we have separate group fitness rooms that would hold 25 to 30 people, maybe 30 to 40 people. Um, we're currently using space at the senior center, which is really helpful because we don't have a space to run those group fitness classes, but the space that we're using um, can hold 14 people in a class. And so it's pretty small. And when we were using our space that we had on Canal Boulevard, we were averaging 25 to 30 um, participants in each class. And so obviously our class numbers are, are decreased, but we're grateful that we can still offer those, um, those programs for people in our community. We're also planning on putting in a bouldering wall. So this would be slightly different than a climbing wall because it's not quite as tall, but it's the same concept. Um, the reason that we're looking at a bouldering wall and not a climbing wall is because of the, it's because of the height. You don't have to have a certified staff person to man it at all times. Um, it's so it will just make it easier for staffing. We're looking at putting in a child walk room, so this is not licensed daycare. This would be a room if you wanted to come in and take a fitness class, um, swim laps, take an art class that your kids weren't participating in, you could drop your kids off in this room and they um, would have some supervised activities that would happen for them uh, while you're taking the class. A lounge game area will be off in the lobby, so it wouldn't be a separate room. And this is kind of a multi-generational space. We're hoping that we'll have youth and adults gathering in our lounge area just to play whatever games that we, we have there. And we'll have games upstairs and downstairs. Aquatics will be an eight lane, 25 meter pool and a separate um, recreation pool, which sometimes is called a leisure pool or family fun pool. So this is a this is a pool that has zero depth entry. It's ADA accessible. I mean, you can um, build a chair directly into it and it would be warmer water. So it would be used for swim lesson programs, for younger kids, for water fitness classes, water therapy. Um, we'd also have a lazy river in there that's really great for exercise or also just for floating if you don't want to exercise. Um, and we'd have a water slide as well. And we're not planning a water slide that dumps into a body of water. It's a fairly new concept for me because I just kind of assumed that that would be the slide that we would put in. But we're planning a water slide that has a separate flume. It will end on the pool deck um, by itself and it only has a few inches of water and so it's safer for younger children to be able to use it. Older people can use it as well, but um, if you've ever taken your kids to a water slide and you watch them go down, as soon as they hit that water, they sink. Um, and so it's not this, I mean, they're, they're safe, but you have to have extra staff on just to make sure that they come up and it's a little intimidating, especially for the younger ones. And so this will make it to where they, they won't sink, they'll just come to the end of their little room and stop. Well, our plan is to have one multi-purpose room, which would house 80 people. We could divide that into two rooms for 40 people and that would be used for our program. So our art classes, cooking classes, um, Sports camps could happen in there, you know, on the floor, but also community meeting space as well um, could happen in those rooms. And then, um, not on the slide, we'll have two separate like party rooms that will be right off of the pool. So currently, if you want to use our swim center for a birthday party, you rent the whole facility. Well, this will give us the option where you rent a room and then you can still use the, uh, the aquatic portion and not have to rent the whole facility. There will still be options for renting the entire facility for people that wanted the pool for themselves, but this might make it more cost effective for families that maybe couldn't afford to rent the whole facility but still wanted to have their kids' birthday party at the pool. And then a teaching kitchen is planned, and this would be a kind of smaller space that's attached to one of the, the multi-purpose room that we could use for, for classes. And then we'd also, it would double as a break area for our staff as well. And then obviously we'll have locker rooms in there, including um, individual uh, family locker rooms.
before I talk about the bond cost, I figured I should talk a little bit about how much the admission costs are planned to be, because um, we're subsidized by tax dollars, um, so we can try to keep our admission fees um, affordable, but the, tax, the taxes that our community pays to support the facility aren't enough to cover the entire expenses of the facility. And so the daily admission for um, kids would be $5, adults $8, seniors currently $5, and households would be 21 But those, for the people that use our facilities on a regular basis, there will be monthly passes, six-month passes, 12-month um, passes available that would greatly reduce that cost. We also have scholarships available for anyone in our community that can't afford to um, pay admission fees. And we partner with three different health insurance probably providers and companies um, so Silver Sneakers, Silver and Fit, and Healthy Contributions through AARP that will cover the cost of a variety of people to use our facilities for free. And two of those, even though they say, like the Silver Sneakers one, it's not just for the older adults. They have a program for ages 18 to 64 as well um, that some people utilize in their community. <coughs> I'm not going to read the whole list, but this is what you get um, for your like daily admission. So you can use, <coughs> it, you can take a fitness class. You can um, we'll have open gym. You can use that water aerobics, lap swim, um, child watch would be included. The things that would not be included would be our specialized classes where we have to bring in extra instructors. So swim lessons, sports camps, art classes, knitting lessons, sewing, or those kind of things. Um, will be an additional admission fee, similar to our current recreation programs that are offered. Okay, so let's talk about tax cost. So the facility is um, $49 million, and we're anticipating um, it's 56 cents per thousand of assessed value just for the bond. So the life of the bond is 20 years, and we are asking also on the November ballot for a 24 cents per thousand local option levy, so that's a temporary five-year operating levy to help pay for the operations. Uh, we're anticipating that when the doors open of this facility, there'll be a deficit of about $1.4 million to operate it, and so we're using um, that local option levy to, um, to operate that facility. Our hope is, is that after that first five years, we'll have enough revenue to, um, with our current tax rate to support the operations of that facility. The average home in our district boundary is assessed at $225,000. The real market value is much higher, um, but the, the assessment is $225,000. For a home that's assessed at $225,000 for the bond and the levy, it's $15 a month is um, what the tax impact would be. Mm. Guys are so white. <laughs> Um, so, just a list of some community benefits. And so, as you all know, I mean, we don't have a facility like this in Redmond. And we have a lot of families that drive to Bend or Madras to take their kids um, to, to the pool for just recreation swim, but also for swim lessons and other programs. And the, we, for example, this summer, our swim lesson programs, we had, for every session, we had five sessions, we had a minimum of 25 kids on a wait list for every session we offered. This and we have, it's one of the staffing areas that we're not um, having a challenge with. We have a lot of swim instructors. And so that's not the issue. We just don't have enough space to accommodate more, more, more kids in swim lessons. And I can attest to that. Our family is not being able to get kids in to swim. And it, it's obvious our, our kids' cousins in other towns make us look like, you know, we don't have anything for our children. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty stupid. Yeah, no, it's, ins it's insane. And not to mention the kids that are drowning every year because we don't pay for this, which you guys don't spend enough time in your marketing on, by the way. That's Fear works, point. and it's yes. true. <laughs> yes, no, you are, you are correct. And I've been telling Matt about it. I'm serious, you guys need to get on that. Yeah, no, we, and, yeah, and we do have some stats about um, it needs to be on Facebook, being in steps. people's news feeds, yeah. being boosted to their news feeds. It will get people in line. Yeah, well, especially because we know that kids aren't getting swim lessons. Yes, and, it, and it's not because they can't afford swim lessons. It's because they. It's because you can't, they get, can't get, in. get in. They learned to swim. Straight up, can't get in. Yeah. And people need to be hearing this. Yeah. 
It is, I mean, we have a river running right on the edge of town. Another one on the other everywhere. side. Lakes everywhere, and our kids don't know how to swim because we can't get them in the pools. Yeah. Not okay. Yeah, no. I, I agree. Um, and so the other benefit is like, we can help support local businesses because instead of driving your family to Bend or Madras, to use a facility there and then going out to lunch there and doing, oh, I need to stop by the store, buy some things for dinner there, we'll be staying in our community and we'll be supporting our local community. Um, facilities like this help with um, encouraging new businesses and encouraging you know, job seekers to live here. And there's a variety of like health and wellness benefits as well. So you know, mental health, physical health, reduced crime rates if kids have a place to go after school. Um, it will increase graduation rates, reduce juvenile crime rates, and there's just so many benefits for a, for a community facility. And so before I open questions for me, I'm going to turn it over to Patrice. She's been so quiet. I know she has a couple things she wants to say. I have been quiet. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. I think I have to stand fairly close to you. Okay. Well, or I'll talk just really loudly. So I'm new to Redmond, and here's this bond measure. And there's this cost, and there are these things you get for that, right? That, and that's, you know, to me, it's like, well, is it worth it? I hate, I hate paying more taxes. Hate taxes. So I had to evaluate that for myself. So here's kind of my story. I moved here four months ago. But nine and a half years ago, I bought a house in Old Town Redmond. And I thought I was going to move there. But we decided not to move there, and we peeled off a, a lot that was next door, and we built another house. And we thought we were going to live there. But we didn't end up living there. We ended up buying property in Terrebonne, which is still <laughs> in the park district. So the impact to me, and I said, I have to sit down and like work this out, right? So the house that we bought, the first one. So the assessment, by the way, the county taxes are crazy, right? Oregon state taxes, anybody confused by it? It's just crazy. So we just refinanced this. This house is worth $400,000 according to an appraiser. According to the county, it's worth 220. I am assessed at $65,000 a year. That means this, for the bond measure, is $52 a year for both bond measures. The one we built next door. The county believes it's worth 440,000. I have no idea what Zillow thinks it's worth. But they've got this one assessed at 206. This one, I pay $162 if this bond measure passes. So, all the properties we own will end up paying $342 for both bond measures. And yeah, some of that, hopefully eventually all of it, because we're such a strong community, can get passed on to renters. Well, except the place we're going to live. <laughs> but, but, you know, why would I be willing to pay $342 more a year and probably absorb some of that? I'd be standing here and telling you about it. Not only that, encouraging you to pay taxes as well. Because I think it's worth it. I truly believe that the value that we get as Redmond comes out of this. So I've heard a lot of people compare this to a gym. Well, you know, it's kind of like going to a gym where you pay 40 or $50 a month. I hate that comparison because I'm never going to go sign up for a gym. I'm sorry, I'm just not. So let's talk about what you get. Yeah, you get a pool. You've got a pool. You guys all have a pool. You have swim lessons. You have swim team. You have water polo. You even have aqua aerobics, right? You all have that now. So why would you do this? Have any of you been to the pool in the last year or two? How many? How many of you have been to the... Yeah. It's cold. It's obsolete. It's cold. It's small. It's cold. And as hard as Katie and that entire staff try to get it clean and functional, it is not the place you want to bring your kids. And it's not the place you want to bring your grandchildren when they come visit you. So we get a new pool. Not only that, we get a pool where your family can go have fun. Your toddlers can waddle in and, and play in the winter. Your teenagers can go after school. We get a pool on steroids. <laughs> we also get, and you also get, I feel like that commercial with the knives. Uh, you also get, you get a weight room. 
you get aerobic class space. You get to do Pilates and yoga and Tai Chi and fencing, I think, is part of the curriculum. Yes, we do, we do have fencing classes. <laughs> you get all that stuff. You get, let's say you don't, you don't like lifting weights, you're going on aerobic equipment, but occasionally you get hurt. Here's where you can go for your physical therapy. Here's the equipment you're going to need when you get injured. You also get courts. You get basketball. You get volleyball. You get indoor pickle courts. I have yet to play pickleball. Does anyone play pickleball in this room? Okay. I, I'm going to learn. I, I swear I'm going to learn. Come to the senior center Monday afternoon. So I need a racket. I, I read that. I need a racket. You get a lounge where your kids can play foosball or ping pong or maybe even ping pong tournaments. I love ping pong. Uh, and billiards, possibly. You get a place for family birthday parties or your grandchildren's birthday parties. Or how many of you own businesses? Maybe this is a place to bring your corporate off campus. But I guess the biggest one to me is that I get additional education program, and I get it in a place that can house enough people. I get to learn. I love learning. I will always be a learner. I get to go to classes on art and cooking and things like Spanish or playing the guitar or local history or robotics or whatever it is you're looking for. There can be program offered. But what it really means to me is community. I moved here to be in a strong, vibrant, energetic, welcoming space. Someplace I can contribute and someplace I can share and be with other folks in Redmond. But we all need to do this. We need it to it together. And it's going to take more than your vote. Yes, I'm going to ask for your vote. But I'm also going to ask for your voice. You're the ones that need to get the word out if you want to support this. You need to talk to your community, your neighbors, your church peeps, your schools. You need to be out there being proactive for this. You need to get a yard sign and stick it in your yard. Maybe even donate some money. <laughs> Whatever way you can support this would be appreciated. Thank you. Maybe <laughs> tax bills. Thank you know. soon. <laughs> Thanks, Patrice. Yeah. So I jotted down your suggestion um, about but does anyone else have questions or suggestions for us? Yep. Dan. Hey, how does this uh, how does this differ from the last time around? And does that difference give you more confidence that it has greater appeal? Than so the facility is roughly similar to what we asked for in 2019. Uh, with the exception, we added the eight-lane, 25-meter pool. And the reason that we added that, we, we kept it out in 2019 because we have a facility that we're still planning to operate. Um, but the reality is, as our community continues to grow, we're going to need two competitive pools. The Cascade Swim Center is aging. Um, it's a leased facility. And so we wanted to invest in a facility, a community facility that was um, park district controlled. Um, and costs are just going to increase. So if we put it in phase two. <laughs> Just adding that, you know, that that body of water would, if we did it 10 years from now, would probably be double what it costs today. And so, um, so that's the biggest change to the facility. But I think the biggest thing is our community's changed. Um, truly, I think in the last two and a half, three years, I think that um, we really see the value of services um, in our community that we didn't have or that we don't have. And I think that having to travel, even if it's a short distance, you know, it's 13 miles to Bend, um, or you know, it's 26 miles to Matters, it's people don't want to have to do that anymore. Um, and, and I think people are starting to get frustrated. I, I think three years ago, we could say our pool was at capacity, but our pool was at capacity because 
We had so many different programs that were vying for pool space, but we didn't have a waiting list for swim lessons like we do today. Um, we didn't have people walking into lap swim almost every day and leaving because they can't get space. Uh, those, so I, I think that uh, we have a better chance because our community's changed. Okay. Uh, two questions. One, um, what's going to happen to the old facility? And second, will this new facility have electric vehicle charging stations? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so first, what's going to happen to the current Cascade Swim Center? So our plan is to keep in operation. Um, our lease currently expires in 2028, so we're planning on operating it at least through 2028. We're anticipating that we'll operate it after that, but we don't know. And But it won't be the same facility, so it will be used more for lap swim, competitive swimming, maybe the um, upper level swim lesson programs, um, the pre-competition programs. The water pool temperature might be a little bit lower than it is <laughs> than it is now because of the type of programming that's happening there. We anticipate it will be open early in the morning, you know, 5 a.m. to maybe 2 in the afternoon. Uh, we think that families are going to want to use the other facility um, in the afternoons and evenings, but we're, we're planning on keeping it in operation. And then your second question, I actually hadn't even thought about charging stations, um, but we probably should, and I wouldn't be surprised if when we are submitting permits for this that it's going to be required that we have, yeah, it'll be that, yeah that we have a few, but that, that wasn't even on my radar. <laughs> yes? I don't know about Eagle Crest. We have all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But you're going to reach capacity. But, as you said, the sense of community. There's a lot of people who do not have that, don't have access to it. If you don't build it now, you're going to build it later. And when you build it later, you're going to spend more money. Well, the same argument you hear from people about, we don't need new schools. I have, my kids are grown. I don't. And we just have to remind people that, I mean, the only way we're going to get these things is by support, all of us supporting them. Here's some of those things. I'm not going to get any use out of it, and we just have to bring them back to the kid. I mean, the vast majority of our kids in town are just being way underserved with all these things, and this is the only way we all have to support it. Well, and it's kids, but it's also adults as well. Yeah, being there and seniors. I mean, it's easy in town. Yeah, it, yeah, it's easy exactly. for me. I mean, my 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 favorite recreation activity is to go find a trail and hike in the middle of nowhere with with nobody around, which is really difficult to find these days. Um, but as I get older, I really want to be able to exercise inside. I really want that elevated walking track. And, or in the winter months today, I really want that. And water aerobics and water for aerobics. aging yep. people that need low impact. I mean, yeah. So I'd like to go back to Eagle Crest for just a moment. Eagle Crest, I'm sure, has lovely facilities. And I'm sure that that's where people of Eagle Crest bring their grandchildren. But that facilities, those facilities are going to reach capacity. And if you don't have the option of also tapping into Redmond, then Eagle Crest eventually will have to build. So in a way, it benefits Eagle Crest for future of Eagle Crest not having to put down the capital to build bigger facilities. So there is a true benefit for that community to have Redmond have facilities that will complement what they've already got. So my question is back to the... Um, <coughs> The assessment is that um, just city of Redmond <coughs> residents, or is it is that whole area that you serve? Yeah, and so all the houses in there. So Eagle Crest would have to pay for it whether they wanted to or not, as long as they get enough votes. <laughs> um, yes. Correct. So maybe that that also then <coughs> encourages the the view of this being uh, you know larger than yourself. <coughs> but yeah, it's and there is some like I've been answering questions on social media. People tell me, well, I can't vote for it because I live on Helmholtz. I'm like, oh no, but you you can't vote for it. You're, you're, you're in our you're in our district boundary, and so um, it does, the the service area is is very large. So if my kids came home and said. Dad, yeah, you gotta be supporting this bond because we need this pool. Uh, that would be a real impactful one. 
is there a strategy to get our children up to speed and understanding it and advocating for it? You. <laughs> <laughs> By going into schools and giving these presentations to second graders in their class. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. So, How do you think um, you get kids to buy the sugar cereal that they're yeah. asking their parents for? <laughs> Watch YouTube kids and look at the commercials. You'll see what's going on. So we would love to, but the school district you can't have any, you, you can't have political advocacy in the schools because this is political, like we wouldn't give, be given access. However, we talk to kids like all summer long, we're, we're handing out materials at the swim center. Um, I was at the Music in the Canyon, um, the last one, and handed out flyers to kids that would ask me questions. I'm like, take them home with your mom, dad, because I think that they, if they're excited about it, they take it home to their parents, and the parents might not even be paying attention that this is coming up. And so we're, we are trying to um, access kids. We have talked to some high school students about um, what they can do to help engage. And so we have a few that are going to um, provide some assistance, but we haven't determined what that is going to be yet. Because even though they can't vote, they're, they're impacted, especially the high school and middle school kids. I mean, they don't, they don't have anything to do after school. They're just wandering. The other thing we could uh, use support on is if you know of communities we should be talking to. If you know of church groups, if you know yes. of some way of tapping into that younger group, uh, we'd love to hear who you might recommend for us to go speak with. If someone in Eagle Press wants to host something at their house, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, t two things. First and foremost, if anybody needs to know what their assessed value is, I just did it on my phone right now. You just go to dial.deschutes.org key in your name and all of your property, any of your properties that you own, whatever, will come up in a list. So like my primary residence, my rental property, et cetera, are in here and I can go and look and my rental property, for example, is assessed at 134,000, yeah. which is much below the average. Which is much below the average. Yeah, so that's cool, I didn't, I didn't know that. So I just figured that out, so I wanted to share that. But secondly, <laughs> I think back to when Ridgeview did their school, the school bond. And Ridgeview, if you remember the time it was built, the economy was slowing down, building costs went down during that project. They ended up coming in much under budget. Do you guys see that as a possibility? And if so, do you spend all that money and do all the extra things? Or do you potentially bank some of that money, depending on how it's written, um, so that you don't have to do the levy? So you can't use bond dollars on operating expenses. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and so we would we would do the exterior. Yeah. If for some reason there was funds left over after that, then we would make some improvements probably to the Cascade Swim Center. We also, those of you that have listened to me talk the last many years, we have this fabulous property at Tethero Crossing that I really want to restore at some point, and so um, we could potentially um, use money for that as well. But this is our priority, so this is what we funded first, and then anything would be else would be funded after that. But yeah, it would be great if we didn't have to charge that levy. I want to say last time this was on the ballot, it was also going, depending on where you lived, you were voting for three potential tax increases. If you were at Creek River Ranch, you were voting for a local assessment, a Jefferson County assessment, and this assessment. Um, are you competing against any other tax increases at the same time at this time? No. There is, as far as I know, there's nothing else on the ballot that's um, tax related. Yeah, I don't the think police, it takes that, the the police station was done before, so I mean, people may forget. But I thought it did. <laughs> Does it take Crooked, Ro Crooked River Ranch in? Only Deschutes County. Yeah. yeah. So not, so not a lot. Just a lot of Deschutes County. <laughs> Yeah, but does, yeah, I, I haven't looked in a few days, but we, we communicate with all the other taxing districts yeah. to try to. There was a local fire option or something. Yes, I think there was a local fire option. Yeah. And then they were voting for some kind of a sheriff's thing yep. that affected for the river range, too, so they yep. were working in. Well, and voter, three times. and voter turnout was challenging as well in yeah. May. I mean, and so we're hoping yeah. that we're, you know, we're right. in November, we're at, we're at a very large election, and so voter turnout should be great. Which you know could hurt us, but we think it will probably help us. Um, I think our generation hurt you. We didn't show up. Eight, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, lower turnout for eighteen to thirty-nine in the May yeah. nineteen election was 
almost non-existent. I love that you think I'm in that practice. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so where can we pick up signs? We want to put out a lawn sign where we get them. So they are not in yet, but I will um, reach out to Josh, if that's okay, and then let you know where they're going to be. I'm pretty sure um, pickup location is going to be at Windermere, but yeah. I would bring some here. And the other thing that hurt in the last election when you guys tried 19 is you did not have a definitive location. Correct. And I, that was a problem for me, and it was for a lot of people that were just saying no because you didn't know where you were going. Yeah, it was an either or. Yep, and, and that did not work. Yep, which is why, and we, I still get comments from people in the community that are like, we would really like it at the current Cassidy Swim Center. I said, well, we're not building it there. We, there's no options. Yeah. I mean, there, there, are, there are options for growth yeah. there, there's, and we don't own that land, so it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. And so, like, we're, we are all in on Southwest 35th. That's our property. That's what we're And the growth, about. when you look at the growth of town, traffic flow issues and everything else, why would you make your traffic flow situation infinitely worse by sticking it between two schools, <laughs> right next to a highway, bus drop off, everything else? Logistically speaking, it's a terrible location. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, I agree. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank okay. you guys thank for you. coming. We appreciate it. All right. More questions. I'm sure Katie's happy to answer. Oh, yeah. We'll hang out. There you go. Thank you, guys. So